Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tony Pellegrino. Thank you for joining me. This is part of a tech talk we do live here on Facebook every Tuesday and Thursday, today being April 15th. All right, today I've got a very special guest, Mark Donnelly from Edelbrock with me, and uh, we're going to get to him in just a second. Um, if you missed our last tech talk, I had some gentlemen from Rugged Radios here to talk all about uh, off-road communications, and uh, we will have their brand new GRMS radios listed on our website tomorrow. So um, you can look for those tomorrow. Um, as always, I welcome your questions and comments. Uh, please make sure you include as many specifics as you can so I can better answer your questions. Um, if you like this tech talk, please share it with your other friends on Facebook. It's super easy to do. And um, for those of you that registered for our free swag a few weeks back, um, it's all in. The gals are packing the, the boxes right now. So that should be shipped either uh, probably next week. Well, this week's just about over, so probably next week. All right. Uh, featured products today. I got a couple things to talk to you about. Uh, one is this thing here. So for you poor souls that got talked into uh, cutting off the back part of the frame on your JK, this is a kit to rebuild it and weld it on so you can actually put one of our bumpers on or a regular bumper. Uh, Mark here was one of those poor souls that got talked into that. I was. And uh, he saw this right away and he goes, hey, that looks like what I need. So uh, great little kit, very inexpensive. On our website, we've actually had this for a while. Today was just a good opportunity to talk about it. It comes as a series of plates and you actually weld it together. So it's, it's fairly inexpensive. So uh, something new there. The other thing was we just got in a whole series of new hats. Uh, Jamie did a great job um, coming up with a good variety of different stuff. Hats are always popular. Uh, fortunately for us, they get dirty and you gotta buy a new one. So we, we like hats. <laughs> All right, uh, what do we got next? Next is Mr. Donnelly. All right, so um, you came out here. Um, you're, you're normally up in Washington, right? Correct. Yep. And uh, you came down here with a JL to yep. show us, and I'm sure some other people as well. Yep. So um, just talk about you know everything you want to on that. Whatever thing. I want. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I came down uh, on Monday this week and uh, actually picked up the JL from our uh, calibration center here in Southern California, uh, cruised it around, visited some customers, uh, came up here on Tuesday and visited with Tony and uh, actually made him take it for a drive. Um, <laughs> it was pretty cool. I, I wouldn't leave without him taking it for a drive, even though he was super busy. <laughs> but uh, um, so yeah, so we make supercharger kits. This particular vehicle is an 18 JL. Um, this kit fits the 18 through 20. Uh, and we're in the process of doing uh, carb certification on the 21 manual transmission rigs. Um, the reason they don't fit the 21 automatics is because Chrysler converted all of those to that e-torque engine. So oh. it doesn't have a traditional alternator on the front. So it changed the quite mounting. a bit with the rig. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so it doesn't fit the e-torque, but um, this particular kit and in, in, in a little bit, we'll have Alex spin around and we can show you um, is for the 18 to 20 JL. Uh, we also make them for uh, the JKs with the 3.6 liter. Uh, there's two different kits, one for a 12 to 14, um, and then another kit for 15 to 18 uh, for the JK. So um, all of our kits are 50 state carb legal. Um, so they're 100% emissions legal here in California. Um, uh, what else? Uh, you know, they make um, uh, average horsepower is about a hundred horsepower increase over stock. Oh, it's that much. It yeah. is that much. It's, it's um, pretty fast. I can yeah. tell you it is not the kind of thing that you would want to hand the keys to your teenage son or daughter. Yeah. <laughs> they get in trouble quick. It, it definitely perked that thing up. And, yeah. uh, 
just looking at the speedometer, you're going fast, but the next time you got to go run a corner. It, it was, it's surprising. Yeah. I mean, you jump in it and you drive it around and the particular rig we have is just a stock Rubicon with four, 410 gears, stock tires, um, obviously with a supercharger on it. So you drive it around town just like normal and it drives like normal, but then you stick your foot in the throttle yeah. and it, it accelerates. That's, that's what, um, when I drove it, so, that's what I was paying attention to was, yep. did it have that smooth, like, hey, I just want to drive this thing mellow like a regular person, yep. and it was fine. And yeah. then when you wanted to get on it, it was there. Yep, yep. So, so a cool. lot of that is in the design of the supercharger and the way they designed the bypass valve. So um, there's a bypass valve on the side of the supercharger that is basically vacuum operated. Um, and what that does is when you're cruising around off throttle where the engine's making vacuum, that bypass is open, allowing air to bypass the supercharger itself. Oh. And that gives you that good drivability, gives you your fuel economy and everything when you're not on the gas. That's cool. Um, and then you roll into the gas, that bypass valve closes, air starts going through the supercharger and away we go. So, cool. um, so um, the kits are sold complete uh, with tuning. Um, so the basically the way the process would work whether you have it done at a uh, installation center or if a customer wants to do it himself um, is you you read out the stock stock tune out of the vehicle um, send that little device with your ecm back to us um, we unlock the computer uh, and then load the tune. We ship that back to you, and then you can do your install, and away you go. So. And you were saying um, this is pretty quick, right? That it's it pretty quick. Um, you know, I would say the average do-it-yourself in your garage could do it in a weekend. Um, average shop's probably going to be seven-ish hours. Um, all the work is basically done under the hood. There's no. Uh, you can use your stock fuel pump. Um, it uses your stock fuel lines all the way up to the engine anyways, so there's no reason to get underneath the rig. Um, it's That's all cool. right under the hood and then in the grill. Um, you know, and then as far as installation goes, I brought a copy of our installation instructions. Um, we do a very good job of doing a very complete installation guide. Um, this guide, when it comes in the kit, it's going to be spiral wound with a backer on it and everything, so it's a little bit more durable for the garage. Um, but it's very complete instructions. It goes step by step. Um, right as you get off the bat, it'll give you a big stop. Important to read the instructions and you want to follow it step by step, especially through the tuning process. Because with the JLs especially, you got to be very particular about removing even battery cables because they have that second battery in them. Um, so you want to make sure you follow the instructions. Um, and then also nice about the instructions is it gives you a very complete uh, hardware guide. So you want to make sure that we send all your guide and it's not just black and white sketch it's drawings. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's a very high yeah. quality installation instruction. So yeah. it, um, it really gives you the ability to, to do it yourself if you're a do-it-yourselfer. Have we got some questions, Richard? Yeah, Anthony, the, the clip. <clears throat> Regarding the 416 crate motor, it states carbureted. What is needed to make the EFI? Um, I, I'm assuming he's referring to the 416 LS. Um, if he is, you can do, we have a couple different EFI systems available for it. Um, we have our Pro, ProFlow 4 system available for it, uh, which uses like the Pro uh, FX manifold. Um, and through our sister company, we'll call it through Fast, uh, we also have our Easy EFI or Easy LS systems that could work on it. Um, so any, any one of those would work. Um, probably your best bet would be to visit uh, the website and or call our tech department and they can help you pick the right stuff. But, um, but either one of those systems would work. Yeah, I know one of my buddies has put one of those on right now. On okay. Bronco. Okay. Bronco. Yeah. Awesome. Stephen yeah. Williams asks, is there a typical RPM range where the supercharger kicks in or will it come on at any point? Uh, that's a good question. So with this style of supercharger, because it's, it's what's called a TVS style, so it mounts on top of the intake manifold, and they pretty much make boost on demand. Um, yeah, let's, so, let's swing around and yeah, look at let's, that. Yeah, let's do you that. Know, let's, let's show everybody what it looks like. <clears throat> so I don't know if, if Alex can get high enough or not, but so the way this supercharger is set up, so it actually replaces the intake manifold well, on the does. engine. Okay. Um, so it doesn't use a centrifugal style that mounts off the front of it. Um, 
So it yeah, uh, because you said this is the root style, right? Yeah. So what it does is it's got a inside the manifold here. Is there's two basically rotors that that intermix together, um, and it actually compresses the air. Um, and so because it's always so it's this whole this thing. whole assembly is all part of it, and it uses this manifold down here that's also part of it. Um, so because it's all post throttle body, it's all airflow that's already in the engine. So when you step on the gas. This bypass valve closes, and now all that air is going through the blower, so the boost is almost instantaneous. Um, yeah, it was seamless when I drove it. Yeah. And you said it kept all this stuff to keep it 50 state Correct. legal, Correct. Right? To be 50-state legal, it had to retain the factory air box, factory air tube. Um, we even had to retain, we had to make sure that the computer system retains all of its factory checks and system checks and everything it does behind the scenes. Um, we even had to re retain the auto start-stop function. Um, which I was very disappointed about. But. <laughs> <laughs> How long has this been out? Um, well, for the JL, it's only been out for about a year. Um, the JK kits came out 2013-ish, I believe. Um, so they've been out for a few years. Okay. Um, so we first started making the superchargers in like 2005 with the Mustangs. Um, and that's kind of what started the supercharger program for us. Um, and then we extended from Mustangs to Camaros, Corvettes, trucks, Chevy trucks, Ford trucks, Dodge trucks. Um, we even do the little Subaru BRZ, um, little pocket rockets. So, um, yeah, and then obviously Jeep. That's cool. So, that's cool. <clears throat> what other questions we have? Mo would ask, are the rotors a screw type? Yes. Yes. So it, it's TVS is the style, which is basically a screw type. They're, uh, each rotor has basically four blades on it for lack of better terms and yeah they kind of they twist together kind of like a ring and pinion like a counter rotation yep yeah yep so <clears throat> Jeff Lund says do they make one for 3.8 or just the 3.6 just the 3.6 uh, yeah I know I have a 3.8 and I'm very disappointed <laughs> about it. So. yeah Mark's a jeeper we forgot to mention that <laughs> uh Terry Runyon how much boost on a JK36 max boost so boost is going to be, it depends a lot on where you are. Um, so we don't actually state boost numbers because the amount of boost it makes here will be different than the amount of boost that it makes in Colorado, say, because elevation has changed, there's a pressure difference. So I would say on average, you'll see five or six pounds. Um, it's not a huge amount of boost, um, but it uh, does a good job of moving air. Yeah, it's 100 yeah. horsepower. So, yeah. and it's emissions legal. Um, so... <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to get too crazy or the next thing you know, your tranny's falling apart and your rear end blows up and exactly. you, know, you got to be careful what you wish for. So, so speaking of that, <laughs> um, so one of the things we did with this kit, because we know they're going on a lot of newer vehicles, um, if you have a newer vehicle, so a 19 or 20 JL, and it's still under the factory three-year 36,000 mile powertrain warranty, if you install this supercharger kit at an authorized dealer, which is going to be somebody like Genrite or somewhere with an ASC certified tech, we will take over that three year, 36,000 mile powertrain warranty. So basically we cover engine, transmission, axles, stock stuff. Um, so if you do have a failure, we want, we're confident in knowing that the way this kit is designed, your vehicle will last just like OE would. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of that security for somebody with a brand new JT yeah. that doesn't want to start throwing boost at it. We know how scary that can yeah, be. So and we've we been talking that. about the JL, but this applies to the JT. This is JT well. also, okay, yeah. Good. So this will do JT also. Um, the Like like I mentioned, the 21 stuff, um, we've got a 21 JT at the Calibration Center. It's going through certifications right now. Uh, so that kit should be available anytime. But if you've got a 20, then it'll go on your 20 right now. So. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. Does it work with a two, in a 2015 JK? Yes, we have a kit for a 2015 JK. Yeah, 2012 and up, which would be the 3.6. Yep. Yeah. The only reason, so we have three kits. We have 12 to 14 is one part number. 15 to 18 is another part number for the JK. The only reason we did that is because Chrysler locks the computers on any Chrysler vehicle from 15 and later. So it requires a little bit oh. more work on our end which is why you'll see two different part numbers. So you don't want somebody to order an earlier kit if you have a 
16 JK or something, then it won't work. Yeah, these cars are getting harder and harder to work. They are. Sometimes that's the hardest part about the job yeah. is the computer side of it. Because yeah. um, you do need, you know, you'll have to plug into the OBD2 port. You'll need to have a laptop or some type of device that you can read your stock tune out. And a lot of times for some people, that's the scariest part, right? Um, is like actually getting in and plugging in and um, turning a wrench is easy. It's, right. it's the computer side of it that can be hard. So, um, <clears throat> What else you got? Alex Salinas, I have a, had very, very bad luck with superchargers, Sprintex seizing, or Sprintex seizing. How does yours differ? Um, well, I can't speak for Spintrex stuff. Um, I mean, ours, it, I believe it's a different design. I don't, I don't believe they use a TVS style rotor, so that's probably one big difference. Our rotors are, they're actually manufactured by Eaton, and they're a coated TVS style rotor. Um, so, I mean, we, we definitely feel we've built a nice product. <clears throat> Dwayne Lewis asked, does it work on an eco diesel? No. <laughs> <laughs> that one's sure, already turbo. Pretty sure that's already got turbo on it. <laughs> uh, Justin Miles, uh, Tony, this is for you. Okay. I've heard you say it in the past that you're not a fan there of it. There it is. <laughs> we knew this was coming. <laughs> Are you going to try it out on Aftershock <laughs> and give us your opinion? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Mark hasn't offered a free one yet. <laughs> I want to be honest. That's the main reason that I actually came down to see Tony was because I knew I needed to put him in the driver's seat to drive it. So it, I, well, okay. So, um, like I said before, and it's great that the question came back up. The first thing I did when I got in this was I drove it really mellow. I wa I wanted to see because my experience with supercharged is that when you even try and crawl a curb, it, it, it ramps up and then, mm -hmm. you know, where this was super smooth and that's yeah. what I was looking for. Yep. It really was seamless. Yeah, good, so, good. Yeah, it didn't take certain RPM to like build like a turbo mm -hmm. and come on or anything. It was, it was very smooth. So the first one I've driven that I was impressed with. Rob Skaggs asked, do you need to change the muffler? Do you need to? No. So you can run it on this. In fact, this rig has a stock muffler. Um, you can do a cat back exhaust or something on it, um, and that won't hurt it anyway. In any way, you won't have to change the tune or anything. It'll be just fine. So, um, yeah, a lot of the whatever's carb legal. Yeah, you know that's at least here in yep. California. Yep. So that was part of the way, part of why we had to, what it takes to make it carb legal, right? Is you have to use whatever the laws are for carb. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically the way it works for everybody to understand is there, the laws are that they don't really want us to make any more horsepower. All of us want more horsepower, <laughs> but they don't want us. So, and a lot of that is around emissions. So what they're doing is they're saying, if you're going to put out more emissions, that's a problem. But if you can make it so it burns clean, then you can pass. So what else you got? Speaking of emissions, this is kind of off topic a little bit. Sure. Uh, Steve Waterman asks, stretching a 2003 Rubicon, is there a kit to move the charcoal canister? He's got a 23 gallon tank and, and the Rock Chalk 60. Excellent question. Okay. So um, for everybody in that same situation, um, you can move that charcoal canister within a three foot diameter of the gas tank. Okay. You can't go past that, but you can relocate it within a three foot. So you can move it to the opposite side of the muffler underneath if you want to. Um, you can turn it. There, there's a, a few things you can do, but just don't move it beyond three feet and you'll be fine. Interesting. Kelly Sims wants to know how much for a yellow jacket. Oh, he, to, one to put jacket. one on his, uh, why, what, I think that's a 15 yeah. uh, JK. Okay. So 15 JK. Oh yeah, we didn't talk price. We didn't. Um, so uh, I'll just go through the through the gamut. So this is a uh, the JL kits. You're going to be uh, retails right around 6,500. I think it's like 6,530 for the complete kit. Uh, 15 to 18 JK is 6,400, um, and then 12 to 14 is uh, uh, I think right at 5,800. Oh, quite a bit yeah, less. So under 6,000. Wow. So And then that's primarily just because on the labor side of breaking oh, the computer. Not locked. Yeah. Yes. So, gotcha. um, so yeah, that's why it's okay. a, quite a bit less money. So, huh. and those are all complete kits with tune. Um, we offer kits without tuning, um, which, so if you get somebody that's really doing something elaborate, that's going to be outside of smog or carb legal stuff, 
We offer without tuning kits, which are less money. Um, you can go to edelbrock.com to get those prices. And then uh, for those of you that are trying to figure out, okay, what would it cost to have it installed? You'd be looking at about a grand based on the number of hours. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mark Medina asks, what's better, centrifugal supercharger or root style like yours? Um, well, I, I prefer the root style, um, but it's, it's just, it's different power delivery. Um, so this being a twin screw, it compresses the air as it enters the motor. Um, and so that typically gives you more boost earlier. Uh, so you usually get higher torque at lower RPM. A centrifugal supercharger, um, it's mounted off the front of the motor and it acts kind of like a turbocharger where it has an impeller wheel that as it spins faster, it moves more volume of air into the engine. So usually what happens at low RPM, that supercharger is still not really ripping yet. Um, and so then as RPM increases, boost increases. So it's just different power delivery for, for what you're doing. Centrifugal, right? Exactly. Takes, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like so I will. Yeah, yeah. So Larry White asked, do you have to run premium fuel? Yes. So you have to ah, run. Good question. Uh, that's a great question. You have to want, run. We have two tunes available. We have a 91 octane and a 93 octane tune. Larry Mode asks, is there any intercoolers with the kit? So it, it comes with an intercooler. So um, basically how it works is the intercooler is actually mounted below the supercharger. And then it has water lines that come out the back of the intercooler through a pump. And then there's actually a heat exchanger up behind the grill. Um, and so that's what actually cools the liquid. And then the liquid as it cools goes back into the intercooler. So it's a water to air style intercooler. Even worse, what does it do to miles per gallon? Um, it's honestly not bad. Um, I've been driving this all week, um, and I've been taking customers for test drives and letting them drive it, and I'm sitting at about 19 miles to the gallon. Um, and that's mixed freeway. That's not being nice to it. Um, so it's yeah, pretty respectful. Yeah, it depends on how far your foot is into it, right? Yes. Making yeah. horsepower yeah. consumes fuel. Yeah, exactly. So. So, yeah. and when you're taking customers for drives, they're not exactly nice to things. If you're cruising, so, yeah. then not Yeah, bad. exactly. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Jeff Bernard, does the kit come with a new ECU or OEM reprogram? It's reprogram the OEM computer. Yep. Uh, how lean does it get on stock injectors? Uh, it doesn't. Um, that, that's part of the tune. Um, we were able to run a stock injector and still maintain the proper fuel mixture. With the factory um, fuel pump. With the factory yeah. fuel pump. Yep. So that's important. Yep. So. I think you would just answer this, but Jeff Benson asks, uh, would the heat exchanger be able to fit behind the grill uh, with a PSC hydro cooler? That I don't know. Uh, how big is it? Um, you might. Because I've got one on mine. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I see something here, but I don't yeah, know if that's the AC it's compressor. A, or... It's a fairly decent size. It replaces the, so you have that uh, core support strut rods. Yeah. So you take those core support strut rods off, the heat exchanger goes on, and then we have new strut rods that go uh, in. So it might, I honestly don't know. I think yeah, it actually mine is behind sits the AC like right connection. here. So then it know? probably would fit then. It might. Um, yeah. So, uh, and actually going back to the other guy's question about injectors, it actually uses a bigger injector. I, am, I apologize. The kit comes with oh, a bigger injector. Okay. So stock fuel pump, you can use stock spark plugs, aftermarket injectors. So just to straighten that out. Um, I won't say her, her name. I use her cami. Uh, kind of off topic. 2003 Rubicon moving rear shock mounts. Do you want more up travel or droop? Uh, typically you want more droop. Um, up travel is typically limited by the amount of space you have underneath the Jeep. Almost always the links and, you know, uh, upper truss um, on the rear, rear end is getting up into the bottom of the body or the frame. So front and rear. And uh, so typically that turns into down travel. And a lot of people, depending on, you know, the kind of crawling you're doing, um, if you're just truly a trailer queen rock crawler, they're setting them up with very little up travel. Mm -hmm. And then um, if it's more all around, you know, then they're setting them up with a little more up travel. So, um, but yeah, mostly when you're adding a 14 inch shock, it's more about droop. Yep. Another one a little off topic. Danny Ashley, bent my Genrite high steer tie rod. Do you recommend I replace it with steel again or have an aluminum tie rod made? 
If so, what size tube? Um, well, uh, actually, if you properly bend your tie rod back in a press, it'll actually get stronger. It's what's called work hardening. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, if you can do a nice job at it, I, we straighten them here all the time. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a much better way to do it. You're, if you've got the tie rod kit from us, that is already heat treated chromoly. And um, that's, that's some pretty tough stuff. So um, I'd bend it back and keep using it. Oh, we're caught up. Got it. Wow, nice. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So, anything else um, like the intercooler, like the um, injectors that comes with this? Um, <clears throat> I just want to make sure we haven't forgotten anything. Yeah. So, it um, just to go back through it, it's yeah, supercharger, manifold, intercooler, injectors, comes with new fuel lines. Um, comes with the water lines from the intercooler down to the heat exchanger, comes with a water pump for that. Um, so yeah, it comes with basically And the rest of it's need. plug and play Everything's stuff, plug right? and play. It's reusing the Re throttle reuses body. Reuses your throttle body. Looks like um, mass air or whatever this yeah. is. A anything, that's uh, EGR. Okay. Um, anything that needs to be relocated or moved, we supply like prime example, the horns. Um, you have to move the horns out for the so heat exchanger. Brackets. So we, we supply um, extension harnesses for the horns. So that way they just plug oh, right cool. in. Um, so anything you need to bolt it on, it, we, we try to supply everything. So it's easy That's cool. you know, and straightforward. So. Okay. Gordon Dillinger asks, superchargers and heat running hot. What's the risk of overheating in areas like Arizona where the summers are 110 plus? Um, you shouldn't really have too much risk. So... Um, you know, with it being an intercooled system, um, it does help keep the air charge cooler. Um, obviously, underhood temperatures are a thing. Um, I mean, a normal rig in 110 Arizona heat, you should probably do one of your guys' hood, hood louvers, louvers anyways. Right. So um, I know on mine, I'm going to actually cut this out and, and open make it functional. those vents. Yes. Yeah. So um, the one thing we do in the tuning, so we there is an air intake temperature sensor, which is somewhere, and I believe it might be incorporated into the throttle body, but it measures the temp air temperature as it goes into the supercharger. So it, if it is seeing very high air temperatures, the tune is designed to pull timing out of it, to add fuel, to do whatever it needs to do to make sure the engine stays safe. Um, so it does protect itself, basically, from, yeah. from hurting itself. Yeah. But <clears throat> Greg Mina asks, uh, how about an upgraded coil pack? Is that something they should do? Um, I mean, through your other divisions, you sell coils and packs. Yeah, we do have coils for other applications. I don't have anything on this. I can, uh, I'll mention it to the engineers. I don't know. Uh, I'm always trying to get them to do more Jeep stuff um, just because that's my thing, but uh, I'll mention it. Carol Barsex asks, I have a 2012 JK with a 1 tons and 40s. I want to put an Edelbrock supercharger off of a 2015 JK. What changes do I have to make to make it work? So they must already have the supercharger. Um, Apparently they have one off of 2015. I, put it on 2015. Well, I think that's the same, right? I, I would, just to be sure, I would definitely recommend calling our tech department to ask them for sure. My understanding is the physical components of the kit are the same. So the supercharger, the manifold part of that all should bolt on. It just might require uh, some kind of a tuning. You might have to, whether we can possibly tune it for you or you might have to go to a custom tuner in your area to, to do that part of it. I don't know. I say put it on and see what happens. <laughs> no warranty. No warranty. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Waterman asks, on the supercharger, is oil used for lubing, and how is it on steep angles or at long duration or at idle? So it has, it has a self-contained oiling system to it. So I don't know if you can see on the camera or not. In this area, um, oh, excuse me, it's on the back of the supercharger, so you can't even see it. So on the back of the supercharger, there's a series of gears um, and, and way, way back here. here. Yeah, back yeah. in there. Yeah. So there is a series of gears, and there is oil that's used for that. It's not very much. I think it's like three ounces. Oh. Um, and it's a completely self-contained system, and it has a 100,000-mile service life. Oh. Um, so it doesn't slosh around. It doesn't move around. So as far as steep angles... Um, anything like that, it, it won't affect really, it Really, it's all. what whatever the rest of the Jeep will do. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, okay. I mean, and there's, there, it's so minimal. Um, it's just basically lubing a couple gear sets, 
um, and it just slings around and it, again, just like a ring and pinion, it just kind of slings around and lubricates itself the whole time. And if it says, can you use the bolt hood lock with the heat exchanger? Uh, this I would, style? I would think so. Yeah, I think he's talking about yeah. the bolt one that oh, I think you, don't you, you cut out the grill or something like, to, uh, hang on. Maybe. I mean, it, it, it comes up right to right here. here. Right? So if you can see my hand, it's, that's how high it comes up. So that might be enough room to get that in there. And yeah. it's about this wide right here. So um, You can probably, if you go on our website, we have installation instructions for these kits. Um, so if you go to the website oh, and you, and you put in the, the kit that you're looking at, you can look at the instructions and there's are some very detailed pictures of how the heat exchanger mounts. Um, you might be able to look at those pictures to reference it and kind of see. Um, I don't know for sure if it'll fit, but that. I mean, Jeep guys are pretty creative. Maybe yeah. they could uh, get yeah. their hacksaw out. Sure, you can figure it out. Room. <laughs> uh, Rodriguez Daniel, what are you guys using for Rubicon sway bar links on 2.5 lift as far as length? No mention of what kind of vehicle or anything. Um, a lot of the time, those kits come with extended links, but. Um, almost always we're switching that out and going with like a rock jock style anti-rock. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's really, cause you get tired of like disconnecting those links or in Alex's case, you know, they just fall off. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the other way to get rid of them. And doesn't rock jock make adjustable links too? So, I mean, you uh, can they adjust do. them. Yeah. Yeah. You can get, um, like fixed ones, adjustable ones. I mean, yeah. yeah. Alex Salinas, how much louder is it compared to stock? I, I didn't hear anything. Yeah. It sounded like factory. Yeah. Yeah. If you really lug it on it, it at high, high speeds, you can kind of just start to hear it whine, but it's pretty negligible. Yeah. You turn the radio on, you don't hear it at all. Yeah. And this, yeah, this is a soft, soft top. top. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. If, if you had told me there was one, hadn't said anything, I mm. would have never known. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, David Cundy, uh, with your tune work with other programmers uh, for gears, tire, etc. Mm. Oh yeah, because sometimes like, they're not question. compatible. Yeah. Um, so if you have a programmer like a Super Chips or something that you flash through the OBD2 port, um, you would want to unload that tune file um, and basically unmarry it from the vehicle, and that way you can do our tune and you can resell that programmer. Um, something to go along with that, if you have a JL, you can use a device like a Taser. Um, those go through the communication box or whatever. I don't even know the proper yeah. terminology for it. But So those are still usable. Or um, with our device that you use to actually read out your tune file, there's a scanner function that's built into it that actually gives you the ability to recalibrate for your tire height to recalibrate for gear ratio. You can do transfer case gearing. Um, you can do sway bar disconnect. Um, it's not as easy as like a super chips with a handheld cause you have to do it through your laptop. Um, but it's definitely doable. Um, so you don't have to buy a second device if you don't want to. That's cool. <clears throat> yeah. Terry mode asks, does using someone else for tuning affect the warranty? Uh, yes, it'll avoid the warranty. <laughs> There you go, Terry. It, it, won't, it won't void the mechanical warranty of the supercharger itself, <laughs> but, when, but anything else, yes. The sorry. engine transmission, yeah, your end, own. yeah. Uh, Ed Gladden wants uh, Tony to take Mark out to the Johnson Valley and put, him through his, put this through his face. Ah, yeah. I'll have to get um, the okay from the CEO. It's on 32 inch tires, yeah. it ain't going uh -uh, far. Uh -uh. I'll have to let him know that we're gonna throw this one <laughs> but, away. But we could definitely power slide it. <laughs> We'll beg for forgiveness. <laughs> Can you, will you hire me when we're done? Because I'm going to need a job. <laughs> Pat Benson, uh, same question. Uh, would Supercharger work for a 3.8? No. no. Plus it tuned in late. I mean, yeah. I, I think there are people that make them for 3.8. There are kits but, out there. Yeah, unfortunately, we one. don't make one. Yeah. Yeah. 3.6 is a good little engine. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think what made this so impressive, you and I talked about this, is that eight-speed 
You yeah, know, it's just so nice. Yeah, it really, it really, really does make it spunky. You know, yeah. it's um, the hundred horsepower is definitely nice, but yeah, the way this thing just rolls to the gears like it does, it's yeah. really fun to drive. It's good. <clears throat> we're, we're caught up. Wow, cool, awesome. How are we doing? Okay, so we're still doing good. If you guys have more questions, uh, keep them coming. Let's go back over and okay. look at some of the pictures you got from the foundry. Oh, yeah, and yeah, look at the video. That. Okay. So um, let's take a look at some of that stuff. So I think we had pictures here. Mm -hmm. So explain so, to us what we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, so I had a chance actually this morning to go to our foundry um, and take a tour. And I took a couple pictures and I wanted to share with everybody. So um, what you're looking at here, um, so as we cast aluminum, whether it's intake manifolds, cylinder heads, or these superchargers, um, it's all done as a sand cast. So this is a sand mold uh, that is created. So this is actually the internals of the supercharger is what you're looking at here. That must be here. some pretty fine sand. Very, very fine sand. Yeah. Um, so and it, it, we have different fixtures that get together and it pressurizes. I think they said it was like 8,000 PSI that Whoa. pressurizes and solidifies this sand. Um, and then you can kind of see it's in a, this black area here is another type of sand um, that this fixture is then sat in and then it'll have a top piece that comes on and then we pump aluminum basically into this mold and it fills from the bottom up um, and basically encases this sand in aluminum and then um, in fact can you pan over to the video yeah, um, yeah so what this quick video is is it's the top half of the mold um, where aluminum is actually being poured in. So the aluminum is being poured in, right. it's going in from the top, yep. and then it goes down to the bottom of the mold and then fills from the bottom up. So in, yeah. um, it's kind of hard to see with the little tab bar, but you can kind of see the aluminum on the far end, how that raises up from the bottom. Um, and that tells the so so all of this that we're looking at is down is inside all this in that mold. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Okay. So and then as that fills up, you see the uh, the aluminum come up the end there, and that lets them know that the mold is full. And then that mold then goes down an assembly line for about thirty minutes as it cools. Uh, um, and then they shake it apart. And then they shake it and and beat and it apart. And then you get what we're looking and at. And then over what there. you get if if you want to go back to that next picture. Yeah. Yeah. Let um, me stop this. Let's and then you get to this next one after they bang it out this is what comes out so ah. now you have the supercharger bot housing and then this is the mold fixture so all that aluminum filled from the bottom up to create the supercharger housing uh, once that's done then it has to go through all the machining processes to knock off all the extra material and, and then it gets powder and machined and so powder coated like and that. assembled and yeah and built to a final process so huh. um, so yeah. this is the end that we couldn't see that has the little gearbox. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Correct. So there's a little plate with a couple of gearboxes, and that's actually what holds the end of the impellers. Um, and so that's what. Um, yep. That's cool. So. Yeah. Yeah. A little behind the scenes look yeah. there. Yeah. We got more questions. Larry White, I have a 2016 JK stick shift with a clutch handle, the extra 100 horsepower. Um, I I would say it's going to depend on the driver. I would say yes, in most applications, it, it'll handle it if it's in good shape. I mean, if you're really hard on it and really driving it, you know, you may end up go, going through the clutch, but in a stock vehicle, stock application, yeah, I would say this, the clutch would handle it. I mean, the clutch is four years old. You might want to throw a new one in. Yeah, never hurts. Yeah. Uh, Steve Waterman asked, do you have an aluminum head for a 4.0? 4, 4 yes. Yep. Ooh. That's nice. Yep. And we even came out with, so one thing is I did Is it higher performance or is it just it, a replacement? It is. It's, it is. So it's an aluminum performance head. And actually what we did, and, and sorry to the four liter purists, I don't remember exactly what's what. We took the better intake port and the better exhaust port. I don't remember what years they were. Oh. So like 98, 99 had like a better exhaust and 04, 06 had a better intake or vice versa. I don't yeah, remember the exact like details. That. Yeah. Um, so we took those port designs um, and basically created an all aluminum head uh, for the four liter. So, um, so it does, it, it'll say on our website um, what intake and exhaust you would have to run, or you can do a header. Um, but then yes, you can do an aluminum head. So, um, cool. and then also, so part of something I didn't cover is with, 
with Edelbrock, we merged with Comp Cams and Fast and TCI uh, about a year ago. So on the Comp Cam side, we recently came out with some extreme 4x4 camshafts for the 4 liters also. Oh. Um, so we've got some new load profiles for the 4 liters, and we actually have a cam that's designed for that Edelbrock cylinder head. So that head, do you buy it as just a casting, or can you get it completely? Fully assembled. Oh, it is. So it comes fully assembled, nice. machined, valves, springs, everything, and all price on done. That, I, don't, I don't recall. Okay. I don't recall. So look um, it up online. Look it up online. Okay. Um, and is a lot of this stuff sold through Summit and Jags and stuff? It or, is. Or are um, they calling you guys direct? So you can do you can do either way. You can order it off our website. Um, you can order it through Summit and Jags. Um, we have a dealer network nationally that are Edelbrock dealers. Um, so just about any parts store, hard um, you know, um, can can get our yeah, stuff. Yeah, speed so, shop, yep, right? Yep. So cool. um, hopefully you can get superchargers from Tony. <laughs> yeah. Keep asking him. Call Keith. <laughs> call Perkins. Tell him you want a supercharger. What else you got? Jerry Duper asks, what is the best camshaft for a 4.8 LS motor? Uh, s send me a message later, Jeremy. We can go over it. <laughs> <laughs> Jer Jeremy's headed for Kansas. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> big lift, long duration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For a 4.8. 4.8. Mm. Turn mm. that thing into an LS7 in no time. <laughs> <laughs> He's got plenty of power. Uh -huh. I've seen him in action. <clears throat> what else we got? Uh, Danny Ashley, in, uh, two questions. Any plans on rear inner fenders for JKU? Uh, we've already got them. They're on our website. Uh, and JKU doors. Mm -hmm. So the, the doors, <laughs> yes. Um, those... Uh, will be completed in about 20 minutes, <laughs> by, I was told by the end of today. And uh, they look really good. We, we made some changes to them that uh, put the door handles in line and the mm -hmm. upper windows are angled in so they close tight. There's Perfect. a lot of cool little things we cool. did to them. So uh, very, uh, we took a lot from what we did with the JL and moved that into the JK. And you said they're so, going to be thick like the JL doors like too. They're thick like the JL right? doors. Yeah, so that's, that's cool. going to be a really nice mm, those item. Nice. So, yep. <clears throat> what else we got? Yeah, yeah we're doing okay. Yeah, cool. Cool. Um, all right. So, you know, the head came up, right? I didn't yep. even know that. What, what else Jeep wise has Edelbrock got for us Jeep guys? So for like for early Jeep stuff, um, we do some uh, fuel injection, like we do a ProFlow 4 system, uh, which is a fuel injection system for like the AMC. So like if you have a, oh, a the 304. Old yep. Oh, oh, wait, like, okay. Like 304 okay. V8. Yep. Um, so we have fuel injection for those if somebody wanted to put fuel injection on it. Um, you know, we mentioned we have camshafts, we have the cylinder heads. Um, we have through fast, we do have some throttle body fuel injection systems. Um, we have our easy EFI, um, and easy EFI 2.0 that you could bolt onto any carbureted engine. They are not California approved. So, um, so that affects Might some be people. an off-road only vehicle. But yeah. Okay. Um, but we do have those if you wanted to get rid of a carburetor and go to fuel injection. Yeah. Um, if you're still running a carb, you should get rid of it. Yeah. Exactly. So um, we've got, we do have, um, you know, we've got some ignition products. We've got spark plug wires, um, you know, and obviously if you're doing any kind of an LS swap, I have everything for an LS swap um, from camshafts to cylinder heads, intake manifolds, uh, you a name it. A lot of the stuff um, we're using. Yeah, a lot growler. of what you guys are using. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, we, we did, uh, we did parts on the growler. We did a cam and plug wires and valve covers. Um, yep. I believe we have an intake and throttle body on Terramoto, if I'm not mistaken. And I just got the valve covers. They look. They did come in. Really Perfect. nice. Oh, we should have had them yeah, up here. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so and then yeah, we've got uh, through RHS. We do um, Ellis style engine blocks, which, um, Jordan's which, which you have in Jordan's race yep. car. So yeah, so we have a lot of stuff for for off road and especially the the performance side. <clears throat> Justin Andrew just ordered uh, Genrec power steering cooler. How do you recommend mounting it directly to the radiator? Oh, uh, 2000 TJ 4.0. Yeah, um, that's going to come with those little plastic things that squeeze through. Um, that actually, believe it or not, I know a lot of people are very apprehensive to do that, but it works very well um, because what it does is it pushes the cooler right up against the radiator. So as the fan draws the air through, it's really coming through that little cooler as well. 
So, um, yeah, that, that should be fine. You haven't had any issues with vibration of them? No, Does, doesn't weigh and enough? Um, if you're worried about that, you know, you can, there's the struts in the grill there and you can use Adele clamps and mount it on there. Yeah. So there's, you know, I see all kinds of different cool. ways that people do it. Cool. So, and by the way, I run two of those little coolers on Terramoto uh, put together. So oh, cool. um, just for extra cool. Nice. Uh, Mitch Moore says, generate spec curry axles, uh, drain plug under the jock strap. I need to change my diff fluid, uh, having uh, enough miles done for the break-in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead and change it. Um, you know, when they did that, it made it really nice because you don't have to pull the diff cover anymore. Um, so uh, it's not a big deal. And if I remember right, that's a 3 8 um, hex to get that thing out of there. Um, you do want to make sure that you put some of that white uh, Teflon tape on there when you put it back in or it'll, it'll drip. Uh, you know, regular threads aren't, you know, liquid tight. And um, I would put in, um, this time of year, I'd put in some 75, 140 uh, gear oil in there, some Torco. Yep, something from Jared Norris. Best upgrade for a 95 Jeep Cherokee XJ, uh, 4.0 stock block, uh, four hole injectors, cold air intake. Uh, what's the best upgrade beyond that? What's the best upgrade from you guys? I mean, um, that, that head and um, that head. To it. Yeah, I mean, that head, and since you're pulling the head off, you might as well put a cam in it too. Um, you do have to remove the head to do a cam and lifters. So that's the opportune time. So I would definitely do an extreme four by four cam and the Edelbrock cylinder head. And then if I was that far into it, I'd throw some new pistons and rings in. <laughs> Cause you and put a new head on, this. put a new head on and it's all nice and compressed. <laughs> and next thing you know, it blows a ring. <clears throat> that's the problem with talking to motor guys. Yeah, right? It's like, where it, do you it, stop? Yep. Does uh, Jeremy Duper wants to know, does Edelbrock make a supercharger for 2012 Ram 2500 5.7 inning? I believe so. Um, I know we do some Ram applications. I don't remember the exact years. Um, again, go to the website. I know we have some yeah, Ram more stuff than for, yeah. for 5.7 and 6.4. Yeah. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> what else we got? Greg Minaw, why aren't headers offered for the 3.6 2012 and up? Uh, um, you know, the way that that engine is designed, I don't know if you've actually shoved your head in there, but the heads actually come to an opening that's about this big, and then the exhaust comes off that. It, it may be this far away, and there's a giant cat right there. Mm -hmm. So um, there's no room for any, I mean, honestly, for what that engine does, it makes a ton of horsepower for what it is. Yeah. Dual overhead cam, you know, even the spark plugs are way down in there. I mean, it's, yeah. it's working pretty good. Yeah. It really the, is. The whole idea of a header is to get equalize the exhaust tube length, right? And with the way the 3.6 head is designed, it kind of does that inside the head already. Yeah. So there's not really a performance gain to really even do anything with it. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Cool. Caught up. Caught awesome. Up. Okay. Cool. Uh, what else about Edelbrock? T tell us. Man, I don't, uh, I mean, I you, I've grown out on top of my You head. and I have known each other for a few years. Yep. You're a motor head for lack of a better description. Yep. Um, totally love this stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is this is a great job for you, no it, doubt. It is. It's a yeah. lot of fun. Um, you know, I get to obviously sell parts that I enjoy, um, a lot like what you guys are doing. Um, so, yeah, it, uh, it, it's a good job for me. I get, I get to cruise around, see cool shops, meet neat people, um, occasionally go out and go jeeping and say hi to people on the trail. And so, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you're just out at Easter Jeep Safari, right? Yep, yep, went to Easter Not Jeep Safari. Not with this one, but with yours. Yeah, yeah. I took mine um, and uh, went to Easter Jeep Safari, went to the Ultra 4 race at Area BFE. Oh, you did? Nice. Um, had a blast there, um, hoping to do some more of the North Series races. Uh, I'm going to try and get out to the Montana race. Um, so, oh, that's right. Your buddy John Matthews is racing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So him did, and did him good. and some other people I know up in Washington are all going to race at that event. So cool. yeah, it should be good. 
So now are you going to hang on to this or do you have to give it back or what's so, the story with so this? So I'll have this for, uh, for at least a couple months. So um, the, the idea was I flew down here, spent the week down here, and then basically tonight I'm going to start my drive home. Um, so if anybody between here and Washington sees me, wave, honk, say hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so basically tonight I'm driving home to Washington and then uh, I'll keep it up in Washington uh, for at least until July. Um, so I'll, I plan to go to, um, there's a rock race event in Northern Idaho, uh, in May at North Idaho mud and crawl. They're doing a cool rock race that I'm going to go to. Um, like I mentioned that ultra four race, um, and then I'm just going to drive it around and go see customers. And cool. so, yeah, and then at some point it'll go back to our corporate office in Mississippi. Um, I'd love to get it back out. I'll mention this on, on this and hopefully that'll entice my boss, but I'd like to get it back out to trail hero. Um, cause I feel like that'd be a great opportunity for people to, to yeah, see it. Test drives in it. Well, I drive. mean, that's what I did last time we went there. I just gave rides in the Terramoto one yeah. after another. So yeah. I feel like that's a perfect place to showcase this, you know, yeah. run up that sand, sand. mountain yeah. and, uh, yeah. jump off, put in four low. Then we'll give it rock. the heat test. Somebody's asking a yeah. heat test. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, going up that sand will so, do it. Cross my fingers. I'll see if I can make that happen. So. <laughs> awesome. Steve Waterman wants to know. If you know how much lighter the 4 aluminum head is compared to the cast iron. I don't know. Um, it, it's dramatic. It would be it's, a lot. It's, it's dramatic, a lot. yeah. Yeah, when you take uh, something like that, you know, that's identical size, the aluminum is going to be two-thirds lighter than the steel. Okay. So it's it's a lot lighter. Yeah. yeah <laughs> beside the fact that it cools better. Yeah. You know, dissipates it dissipates heat. Dissipates heat, yeah. yeah. Uh, Terry Moog wants to know... Do you have coils and plug wires for a 6.0? Uh, 6.0 LS? I would imagine it's an LS. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah. Um, so and that's basically what Jamie's got, right? Yeah. 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 So he's got the, so we offer a couple different plug wire kits. We have, like, I think we did the extra longs on Jamie's because yeah. he was moving the coils up. To the middle, yeah. um, we have stock location coil kits or plug wire kits. Um, and then as far as coils go, we have truck style, which would be the six liter. Um, and then we have car style. They're just a little bit different mount design for the valve cover. <clears throat> cool. All right. Awesome. We're, we're down to the last five minutes, everybody. So if you have any more questions, fire them in and uh, we'll be happy to cover those in the last few minutes. Um, otherwise, um, with seeing is how you like to watch videos, make sure that you get over to Jen Wright's YouTube channel. We have uh, saved all of these tech talks over there, so you can go back and watch them real easily. They're well organized if you just get to the Jen Wright channel over there. Otherwise, um, if you don't see something um, on our website that you're looking for, pick up the phone and call. We've got people there that do nothing but answer the phones. We're one of those companies that still actually has a live person. So, <laughs> <laughs> so call on in. And they talk Jeep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Every single person, even the receptionist drives a Jeep. So, yeah. yep. What else we got? We're still doing good? Okay. All right. Then uh, we're going to wrap it up and cool. say thank you for joining us. Absolutely. This is awesome to have you here. And yeah, I appreciate you having see me. See, this gives, gives our, our viewers a whole new yep. look on everything. So, yep. especially since I'm always kind of... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And if you have questions that you think about later, you know, feel free to reach out to, to Tony and his guys. Yeah, I'll give you Mark's cell number. Uh, they, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> reach out to them and they can, they can contact me with questions or go to our website. Um, our 800 number to our tech line is on the website. And you're on Facebook too. Uh, I'm on yeah. Facebook too. Yep. So I'm sure you can find me. Yep. So I'm not hard to find. Yep. So, <clears throat> all right. Yep. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next Tuesday.